Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSGO News and we actually have a sponsored shout out to start out today's episode. So thank you to CSGO Empire who's actually doing a $150,000 giveaway for the Christmas season on their website right now. It's free to enter as well. They're doing kind of an advent calendar. So 26 days of free prizes for all of you and on Christmas day, the 26th day itself, they're gonna be doing a grand prize drawing for over $50,000 in skins. Across 26 days, it's also gonna be $150,000 given away and it's all free to enter. So I'll link that down below for all of you guys and huge thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode. So hope you guys all enjoy all of today's awesome stories. Let's get into the first story though, and that is of course in big news as we had some hints a few days ago from Decay himself about CLG leaving the CSGO scene. It does seem to be proven and confirmed as of right now. The roster will be leaving CSGO altogether. No, as of right now, no confirmations on their CLG red, their female CSGO squads, but both their CSGO male team and their male academy team will be leaving the scene altogether. So a list of players on screen for all of you, along with FNS and Ricky and all those guys, they will be trying to stay together as a team uh, to be bought out by someone in the future, but if they cannot be, of course, those players are all on the market right now seeking offers for the future of CSGO, and obviously the main reason why, if you guys did not read through, it was just strictly financial reasons. Now, the CLG squad has been not necessarily struggling in the North American scene, probably one of your top five, def certainly a top 10 North American team, and probably closer to a top five, but when it comes to money-wise, they failed to make ESL Pro League Finals just barely, and when it comes to other tournaments, they really haven't made enough money, obviously, financially to succumb and actually pay for the roster itself. So CLG will be leaving the CSGO team. Now, even more importantly, though, for all you Brazilian fans out there, some other CSGO team news is Villa Mix might actually be a CSGO team to them at next major. We actually, a lot of people not really talking about this rumor out there right now. If you guys remember, one of the lower tier Brazilian teams that's actually come to light these last few weeks is Team One. Now, Team One, one of their former members is actually known as Bit. He's actually been posting on Instagram and Twitter pictures of the trio and himself, of course, with KNG as well. So that means Team One member Bit, alongside Henny, Lucas, and FNX from Team Immortals, the X mortal members and KNG that's the new five-man team and it was kind of a rumor a long time ago you know the party squad also gonna be called Villa Mix whatever they want to be called in the future they are as of right now boot camping for the major and also in big announcements they cannot tell us anything that was actually quote-unquote they can't announce anything as of right now it does seem some teams out there or some organization is going to buy these five members out and that will be the new five-man Brazilian roster to take that major spot and it's gonna be so exciting to see how these guys do so yes one more time for all of you guys team one four member bit FNX Henny, Lucas, and KNG will make the five-man Brazilian roster who will have a major spot, and they are currently boot camping right now, I believe, in Poland, and we'll see who actually signs those guys in the near future. Now, this next story is a big one. It's going to take a lot of comments down below for me to read through to get what kind of judge your opinion on this topic. Now, we've had this topic debated a lot in the past, and that is not only CSGO gambling, but as well just CSGO cases in general, and I want to know what your guys' thoughts are. Do you really think that CSGO cases are a form of gambling? We've had this debate heavily in the past. Many people are on both sides, and as well as riding the fence, I think I'm kind of met in the middle on when it comes to this kind of debate guys whether I think CSGO cases are gambling I know if you guys ask me if CSGO cases are fair I, I think they're certainly not when you open a CSGO case or any loot crate out there uh, especially when it comes to CSGO you have a very insignificant chance to actually make money on that case so I think in, in some terms yes it's a form of gambling now could I actually classify that in legal terms as gambling no I think these games are very very well protected and I really highly doubt there's gonna be any changes made to in-game loot crates cases across any kind of games out there I highly doubt that government can make any really re real regulations anytime soon to stop this kind of thing. So to touch on this kind of story, it actually broke out in Belgium. That country over there is actually trying to ban loot crates altogether. I'm sure many of you guys are also aware of. Uh, we had Star Wars Battlefront 2 released uh, really recently here. They also had their loot crates in game be released, and it was kind of a very flawed game from the start. You know, a lot of the main characters that you wanted to play in game, you had to play an, ex an extraneous amount of time to actually unlock those characters, or instead you could actually buy credits or buy loot crates to unlock them. And so it kind of became a very very flawed system and of course ever since then they've actually retracted the system but not before Belgium caught on we also had the Belgium the Minister of Justice his name is Cohen Jeans he actually quote unquote he did come out and say mixing gambling and gaming is bad especially at a young age it is dangerous for the mental health of the child now on top of this we also had Belgium's gaming commission get involved and this is actually huge news because the country itself of Belgium is now trying to ban loot crates and in-game cases for all games itself now really quickly I want to preface this by saying this is going to be a strenuous process there's no there there's no way in today's legal regulations, especially when it comes to these well-protected games, that any kind of justice or any kind of minister out there can actually say, we're going to ban this and have it happen in a week or two. This is a, probably at least a year-long process, if not even longer, especially if you guys read further into the article. They actually want to ban them all across Europe, which I highly doubt is going to happen. So I wanted to bring this to light to all of you and ask you the question, do you think that CSGO cases or any in-game loot crates, any in-game purchases are actually in danger of being banned in countries? I highly doubt it. We've seen this across 
podcasts, many, many other platforms as well, especially when we talk about CSGO gambling sites, the struggle that it's come for the government to actually shut down gambling sites that are still around, still fully operating, even after Valve was threatened by many, many commissions in America itself. There's really no struggle right now to actually go out on any website itself and click through and you can gamble no matter what your age, no matter where you are in the world, you can gamble a limitless amount if you really want to. So I really don't think the restrictions right now legal are ever going to come into place. And I think it's definitely going to be many, many years before we actually see any progress on this. So to answer the question in the thumbnail, are case opening sites and gambling sites and cases in CSGO really in trouble? I highly doubt it. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about that. But also, very last in today's episode of CSGO News, we have some changes to Astralis' roster. So as of right now, we had Dennis tweet out that he could actually not play for ECS or the EPL Finals for the team. Very unfortunate, though, because Dennis did very well for this uh, for the Blast Pro Series for them, where they placed second to SK Gaming in that best of one tournament. But unfortunately enough, they, well, fortunately enough, they actually found a replacement instead, and that is former Dignitas member Rubino, who will stand up for the team for both ECS as well as EPL uh, Pro League Finals. And Device should be back sometime later in 2018 or early 2018. So, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. If you guys did, please leave a like or comment down below. As always, huge thank you guys for the big support, and also huge thanks to CSGO Empire for the sponsorship. I really do appreciate that, and uh, as always, I'll see you guys on a couple days. Remember, I like you.